Welcome back. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the digestive enzyme cascade that occurs in the small intestine when you eat food, and we're going to focus on really the enzymes that are degrading proteins into amino acids for absorption. Okay. Um, now, it gets a little bit complicated, but hopefully I'll make some sense of this for you. Over here we have our intestinal enterocytes. Um, looks like here we might have a goblet cell that's going to be able to secrete some stuff into the lumen of the small intestine. But the point is, in the enterocytes, uh, actually exposed into the lumen, we have a membrane protein. And this protein right here, which I have the ribbon diagram shown for, is going to actually initiate uh, the cascade. And this protein sometimes is called enterokinase, which is kind of a misnomer, but the actual name is enteropeptidase. And this protein, which is exposed in the lumen, is going to catalyze the initial activation of trypsin. Now, trypsin is, hopefully you know, secreted as trypsinogen. It's inactive. Well, if you start with an inactive protein, how the heck do you initiate a cascade and get all of these enzymes activated? Well, it turns out that enteropeptidase, which is expressed in the membrane uh, facing the lumen of the enterocytes, enteropeptidase is actually able to activate trypsinogen into trypsin. Now, I'm going to mention this very briefly, but enteropeptidase is actually initially not active. It's actually made as pro-enteropeptidase, and there's actually a little bit of confusion, as you'll see if you research this, as to how this enzyme is actually activated. Um, no one's really sure right now with 100% certainty, but the point is it's known to start with enteropeptidase. So the pancreas, remember, secretes exocrine solutions into the lumen of the small intestine, and these exocrine solutions contain these enzymes like trypsinogen. So the pancreas secretes trypsinogen, and then enteropeptidase, which is a serine protease like we would expect, uh, clips off a part of trypsinogen and makes the active protein trypsin. And it turns out that this initial formation of trypsin is enough to activate the rest of these enzymes. Okay, So trypsin, even though it's not the first active enzyme, really enteropeptidase is, trypsin is the enzyme that's going to activate all of these other, all these other uh, small intestine serine proteases. Okay, So let's talk about it. Trypsin is going to activate chymotrypsinogen into chymotrypsin. Okay? Pro, it's, trypsin is going to activate procarboxypeptidase A into carboxypeptidase A. And by the way, if you see this in text written as procarboxypolypeptidase A, that's the same thing as this. So sometimes they'll put the poly in there, sometimes they won't. Trypsin also activates procarboxypeptidase B into carboxypeptidase B. And we see here it catalyzes some of these other reactions. Proelastase activation, secreted and active phospholipase A2 activation, and procolipase activation. Uh, these latter two don't actually act on proteins. They're, going to be going to, they're ultimately going to be acting on lipids. But the point is trypsin is going to be responsible for the activation of all these. And in this video I'm not going to really go over the functions of these, but I want to demonstrate kind of in pictorial form that trypsin is actually the enzyme that directly activates all of these proenzymes into their active enzyme forms. Okay, And if you were curious, here's a table down here that I got off uh, Google that has some of these enzymes in it. Now, what's also worth noting is that when this enteropeptidase does the initial activation of trypsinogen into trypsin, we see here that trypsin also can act on trypsinogen. Okay, So trypsin can, can activate trypsinogen into more trypsin which is a positive feedback cycle because what we're saying is that trypsin can actually activate other molecules of itself. So if you start with three molecules of trypsin, say, you can end up with nine and then 18 and I don't know, whatever. I mean, the point is, is that trypsin can activate itself by activating other molecules of trypsinogen that are secreted by the pancreas exocrine solutions. And so this is gonna act in a way to very rapidly amplify uh, the activation of all these enzymes upon consuming a meal. Because trypsin not only activates these enzymes, which are going to be important for digesting the food, but it's able to activate more molecules of itself for more activation of more of these enzymes and degradation of proteins. Okay, So hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. Again, I'm not going into the function of these proteins right now. All I'm talking about is the cascade itself. But just remember, enteropeptidase in the membrane of the enterocytes, 
is going to do the initial activation of trypsinogen into trypsin, and then this trypsin can activate all of these other proteins right here, in addition to activating more trypsinogen into trypsin, which is our positive feedback cycle. All right, so hopefully you learned a little bit of something in this short video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications.